Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Cade Junkerth. I own Fitness Junkie Training, where we specialize in helping busy professional men get in the best shape of their life while working smarter, not harder. And today, uh, I usually say I'm joined by a badass guest, um, but this guy is basically a professional badass. <laughs> so we've got a stuntman, strongman actor on the podcast. We've got Todd Ryan Jones. This man, um, I feel like he kind of, when we talked before, he kind of downplayed his his acting career. He's been a lot of things. He's, he's been in the show Succession, um, Black Mass, A Man Called Otto, um, Central Intelligence. He's been in some some big name films and shows, pretty awesome. Um, and this dude, he he's going to do a really cool feat of strength for us. Um, so y'all are in for a treat. But first and foremost, I appreciate you being on the podcast, Todd, and uh, and I'm excited to get into it, man. Me too. Thank you for uh, being here. It's an honor. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I know you said um, you're going to do something for us. So uh, I don't know what it's going to be, but you ready to to do a feat of strength for, for sure. Those why things? not? <laughs> Let's awesome. see here. I'll give you the choice. Okay. I have 60 penny spike, solid steel spike, steel horseshoe, or I have one of these old school giant fat phone books. Let's do the horseshoe. I feel like that horseshoe. Yeah. Copy that. So with the horseshoe, I'm actually in the Guinness Book of World Records. Really? For uh, the most hearted horseshoes in one minute. So I will show you what harding a horseshoe means. Damn. Try to uh Keep everything in the camera here. It's important that I keep everything in the camera because inevitably somebody will find some reason that I'm faking it. It's fake, you know, whatever. I'm going to... Typically when you're bending any kind of steel, you, you put some wraps on it. And people go, oh, that's that's the the trick. No, it's because the steel will dig into your flesh. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay. Try to make sure I have enough room to do this. You can see this okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks good. Here, say something, Todd, because I think the, the camera's on me. <laughs> What's that? You're good. Okay. All right, here we go. Midpoint right there. Damn. So that. It's called Harding a Horseshoe. Now in the shape of a heart. That's badass, man. That You made that look easy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's crazy. So there that is. <laughs> That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, man. That's it's early in the morning for that too. <laughs> it is early. It woke me up. It's all right. Now we can go about the day. All good. Man, I, I'm I, I don't I hope you don't take this the wrong way either, but you, you don't look like like the biggest dude. Like, you yeah. know, so it's it's pretty crazy to see you just bend steel like that. Um it, is that something you get often? Like you don't like you don't look like the typical like strong man. Yep. No, that's that's uh that's really the entire point, you know. <laughs> not not this big hulking guy, and uh, <clears throat> you know, everybody in my I I believe everybody in the world is way 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 stronger than you think you are, but if you actively decide to tap into that, man, you can you can do some crazy stuff. You know, that whole uh the classic scenario of uh. The mother seeing her child trapped under a car and she boom and doesn't even think about it. I 
think that's very, very true. And uh, you'd be surprised what you can do if you just decide to try to do it, you know? Yeah. How, how can people tap into that more? Like, how do you, what do you do to channel some of that like inner strength? Um, basically, uh, believe you can, um, use the mind body connection, use your imagination. If you want to call it, just really picture everything the way I do it might sound cheesy. I don't care. You ask, so I'm going to say, so the way I was taught to do it is say, I'm going to, you know, bend a, a hard horseshoe or a hard piece of steel or something like that. <laughs> this is just the mindset part, not the actual, you know, right. Um, method. Uh, so I'll get into it. You, you're not just bending with your hands. You're not even just bending with your whole body. You're bending with everything. So you're taking everything pretty much from the earth, the universe, whatever, boom, up through your toes, all the way up through your body, and then boom, and focus it into whatever it is you're trying to bend. Yeah. If that if that makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. And I think even something I say in, in training is like, you know, even a bench press, you can use your full body. Now, most people think a bench press is just, you know, your chest and your triceps. But like when you're doing movements like that correctly, it's like you can use your whole body in those movements. So I think that's interesting that you say like even bending a horseshoe, people would think like, oh, that's just your forearms, your biceps right. a little bit. But like you can channel everything to 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 channel your full strength. So I think that's super interesting. That's 100%. awesome. Yep. Use every little fiber of your being and then yeah. some. Yeah, that's awesome. Exactly. What inspired you to become like a stuntman, strongman? Athlete? <laughs> what sparked all this for you? A um, couple different uh, things. I don't know if you can see that picture behind me there. It's a guy yeah. named Joe Bonomo. He had a lot to do with it. Um, he he was also a stuntman and strongman. Let me see if I can uh, say it all without bungling up the timeline. So... Uh, what got me into the strongman stuff was, uh, are you familiar with Pavel Satsalin? I'm not. You're not? Uh, he's uh, he's the guy that pretty much spearheaded the resurgence of the kettlebell. Oh. Okay. The Russian special forces guy. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, kettlebells. They yeah. were very popular, you know, 100 years ago, fell out of favor. And he was the guy that kind of brought them back and was like, no, these are amazing. Um. He has a lot of really good training manuals, uh, books that, that I used to get and, and I would read them. And uh, he would always reference these old time strongmen from the late 1800s and early 1900s. Yeah. And these guys, this is exactly why I don't get offended at all when you're like, you're, you don't look like a giant dude. That's how these guys were. A lot of them, you know, they were they were built and everything, but. A lot of them were no bigger than I am or maybe smaller. Yeah. And they could just do these mind blowing. Like they were, they were like superheroes. They could bend yeah. steel and break <laughs> chains and ram and nails through boards with their hands and yeah. all of this just awesome stuff. And I was like, Whoa, you know, what, what were they doing? How can I learn how to do that? That's what I want to do. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people my age, see pictures of Schwarzenegger bodybuilders or whatever. And that's what inspires them. The old time strong men. That's, that's, that's what got me. It clicked. And I was like, yeah. I want to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's yeah. even more impressive when, you know, you think strong men, you think these big dudes, like, <laughs> so I think it's cool. It's like, yeah. it looks like an, a normal person doing these crazy things. So I think that's really yeah. cool. I, I do too. It's like, it's all, it's like a sneaky, like, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just like, it reminds me of uh superheroes. I was a yes. comic book geek growing up my whole life. So I just, I like that. That's awesome. Was this um, sparked at a, at a really early age? Like this, is this something you've wanted to do? Like since you were a little kid or when did this all? No, no, not really. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Um, No, I uh, got into martial arts when I was, older i was actually a really unathletic kid i was pretty overweight so yeah complete everybody thinks that i was like a jock or whatever when i was in school couldn't be further <laughs> from the truth absolute opposite wow um 
That's cool. So you, you yeah. So switch. I got into it through uh, when I got older. I decided no, I can be this completely different person, and that's the way I want to be. So started getting into physical culture, working out of all kinds, and got heavily into the martial arts. And it was through the martial arts that I started learning about uh, those books I just told you about. Yeah. And uh, that's 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 the route that I went. Very cool. So at that time, I was also a struggling actor in my early 20s, yeah. trying to figure out uh, what I can do to make myself stand out and get hired and build a career. Um, I got into the strongman stuff and just uh, sought out any and all literature that I could possibly find on, on these guys and how they train. And uh, it turns out that this guy behind me, Joe Bonomo, was one of the pr most famous strongmen of the early 1900s. Uh, he was also a pioneer stuntman in the silent era. And he's got this really great book. It's an autobiography. And uh, I got a copy of it. And so I'm already into the strongman thing. And I'm a, I'm a struggling actor trying to figure out how I can make myself stand out. And I'm reading this book. And it was just something about the way he would talk about it. He would say stuff like, you know, this is how a strong man does things or a stunt man does things or, you know, like this might be a problem for a normal person, but for a stunt man, you know, we can figure <laughs> it was just something the way you said it. And I was like, stunt man, like that, that would be pretty cool. I hadn't really thought about that at that point. That's so awesome. I decided to go to stunt school and that's how I was going to. Oh, well, there's a school myself. for it. There's so is that more like, is there actual like education learning or is it more like kinesthetic school like you're just you're doing things learning things like that uh you're you're learning how to do the straight up stunts yeah. um it, there's not i'm not even sure how many there are nowadays um even the one i went to is uh the closed shop it's not around anymore okay. um most people i would say don't get in the business that way but some of us did, and I was glad I did. I, I I learned stuff, learned how to do a stair fall without breaking my neck, and that was that was my first kind of big stunt that I got hired for afterwards. So that's awesome. I was, yeah, I was uh, I was watching some of your like your stunt reel, and it, yeah, it seems like a lot of stuff that you've done in shows and movies is like a lot of you know having to fall down or like having to be in fight scenes and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that, that's super interesting. So you basically have to learn how to not hurt yourself when you're doing this type of stuff, right? That's that's kind of as best you can. Yeah, as best you can. There's always gonna be, you know, a level of you're, you're taking it to, you right. know, to to a certain level. But yeah, you do your your absolute best to minimize it. Especially the older you get, you're a little less, uh, you know, gung ho about <laughs> not caring about getting yourself hurt and you're always always looking for those little extra ways to right make yourself a little less uh bumped and bruised at the end of the day for sure <laughs> well this is man like this is super cool like i've never even really heard or met anyone that does this type of thing like but you know a lot of times when people do things that are very kind of against the grain you, there's some pushback just with people you know like your family and stuff like that like were you urged to take a more traditional kind of career path um yeah yeah you know um yeah you're gonna have that and uh it's i think i think you're gonna have that doesn't matter what you do even if you are taking a super traditional path you're yep. always 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 gonna have haters you're gonna have naysayers it's just it's part of the balance it's part of the yin and yang you yep. can't it's going to be there no matter what. So don't worry about it. It's That's going true. to be there. doesn't That's matter true. if you do the, the coolest thing in the entire world. Somebody's going to try to detract you. You know what I That's mean? That's true. Yeah, it's it's kind of like, you know, even if you're doing something that you don't necessarily love, <laughs> you're going to get kind of hate or people saying a certain thing about it anyway. So why not go for the thing you love, right? Exactly. So yeah exactly a hundred years from now nobody none of your detractors are gonna be around anymore so don't worry about it you know? <laughs> for sure what what do you think it is that like makes people like not chase their dreams and their goals like what why do a lot of people because i've heard a stat like something like 60 percent, maybe even more than that like 60 percent of people like 
don't enjoy what they do, like they hate their job, basically. Like, what do you think it is that causes people to kind of give up on kind of their dreams or, you know, give up on things that they really want to chase and do? I think it's exactly what we just said. They're they're afraid of slash embarrassed by what other people are going to think. Yeah. And that's because of what we just talked about. There's always going to be that, that right. you know, crowd of people that are going to try to make you feel like that. Right. So that's Some of the more traditional stuff sometimes feels like it's like safe, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, you know, a lot of that part is true. There is, yeah. you know, it is a lot safer to go after the traditional route. But if right. if it's not making you happy, man, you know, we're not going to live forever. Right. You know? Yeah. Do what you want to do. At least try. Yeah. And uh, there's absolutely no reason you can't try, even if you even if you do this traditional thing, just to you know make ends meet and all that stuff. That's also part of it, you know. If you're if you're see if I can articulate this correctly, you're not screwing up because you have a day job that you hate. Yeah. while you while you go after what it is you know what i mean you're not yeah. doing anything wrong that's just part of it so don't worry about it don't don't look at that like oh i'm a failure because i'm not doing what i really you know right no, just do what yeah. you have to do to be practical and while you go after and then you can go after your things whatever it is for the rest of your life there's no reason to stop or not do it 100 percent. yeah i was actually i had a psychologist on the podcast pretty recently um and I, this was a question i asked him i said do you think everyone should have a side hustle? Like, do you think everyone should be chasing kind of their purpose, their meaning in life? And he basically told me not everyone is cut from that cloth. Like some people, mm -hmm. you know, just don't really have the entrepreneurial type of genes and, and like chase the things that they really want to do. Some people are just fit with doing a regular nine to five. And he said, you know, there's nothing wrong with that but you should still seek out kind of more meaning fulfillment, even if it's not like what pays the bills for you. Right. Yeah. So it can be something that's just like you're providing value. It's like what you enjoy doing, you know, even volunteering at an animal shelter, if you love animals, things like that. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be your revenue generating thing that pays all the bills, but um, he, he was basically saying you'll get a lot of more fulfillment out of life. If you do have something that, that you're chasing, getting meaning out of outside of maybe if you have a regular nine to five job that doesn't really provide that for you. So, right. Yeah. I've uh, talked to a psychologist myself not too long ago. And he said, not only is it good to do that, it's actually really important to right. do something that makes you happy like that. Yeah. 100%. Super important. Yeah. yeah he's, he was basically saying, cause I, I think the whole podcast was basically about like how to live a happier life. That's kind mm -hmm. of a lot of the questions I was asking him. Um, and he said, yeah, like that's the, basically the route to happiness <laughs> is like yeah. getting more meaning and fulfillment out of like providing value, um, to, to people and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Even on a daily basis, do something, a little, little thing that's going to make you happy. Yeah. Totally. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Um, you know, was this something that you had to do as a side hustle for a while did you work regular jobs and, and do this like before you could before you got a bunch of acting gigs and stuff like that yeah uh, so I got in the martial arts world I was uh back in the day I had aspirations to do that maybe op open up my own school um so I was doing that for a while I became a trainer personal trainer that's right and I think I was really lucky there because I actually loved that job and I actually even now I kind of miss it Yep. And, uh, so I, I automatically didn't have that feeling of like going to a day job that you hate. I was, I was totally cool with it. I loved my day job. So, uh, I did, I think I had that advantage where I wasn't, I was just in a good mindset and I wasn't worried about, you know, this other career that I'm trying to get. Cause I'm enjoying the one, even if that doesn't work out, I, I enjoy the one that I have. Right. So uh, that's what I was doing first. I was in the, the fitness industry like yourself. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, and you said you miss it, man. You can, you can still get some clients here and there if you want. You know what I mean? It's I could. I could. Um, in fact, uh, we've been on uh, strike lately. I'm sure a lot of people have 
uh, heard about that in the in the news and stuff. There's a there's a huge strike going on. Started with the writers' strike first, and then uh, my union, the SAG after, went on strike. Okay. It looks like finally the writers have have come to some kind of resolution. Um, but uh, we're we're still on strike. So anyway, uh, yeah, I've definitely thought about it uh, over the last few months. I'm like, I could start pulling in some clients. The whole reason I stopped doing that is just because I got so busy with the the other my stunt career that uh, yeah it wasn't fair to my clients. Like my I get hired on very short notice. I could get a call right now and be in another state for a week. You never know what's going to happen. So right. it wasn't fair to my clients. It was a it was a tough decision. I didn't really want to stop, but I was like, ah, I think it's think it's best if I, you know, yeah, stop doing this for now at least. For sure, you never know. I yeah. never know. I might, I might get back into it. Yeah. But I think too, um, sometimes you got to make the main thing, the main thing, right? Sometimes you, as, as entrepreneurs or people kind of chasing their, their dreams and stuff, we can get distracted and kind of have entrepreneurial ADD. So, you know, mm-hmm. I would say probably, probably focus on what you're, <laughs> what, what's paying the bills and what's working. And everything. Yeah. What's right in front of you. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I wanted to circle back because you mentioned believing, you know, most people, you know, they don't believe that's, that's kind of the first step when, when you're like trying to do certain things, even physically, like you're saying with your stunts and your, and your feats of strength, like the first step is believing. I think a lot of times, you know, when it, whether it's people wanting to get in shape, whether it's like chasing a career that you actually want to chase, whether it's like, even just as simple as like jumping into a relationship, like finding your significant other, like whatever it is, like trying to improve I feel like you have to adopt a certain identity and believe that you're the type of person that can do these things. So how can people adopt a more strong belief in themselves? How can people um, adopt a new identity and, and show themselves that they're the type of person that can accomplish the things they really want to accomplish? Boy, that is a, that's a kind of a tough question. <laughs> All I can really do is give you myself as an example because i can tell you for a fact that that's what i did okay and i had no special advantages or connections when i was a kid i told you earlier i was a pretty overweight non-athletic kid um my parents were regular blue collar people i was born and raised in pennsylvania i've been to hollywood once in my entire life (laughs) wasn't raised in hollywood had no connections you know nothing like that Um, I simply decided at some point that this was the kind of person I want to be. And, uh, once you have that in mind, you're, you're, you're automatically, your behavior is going to change. If you make a decision, you know, all that's left after that is to act on it and things are going to happen. If you're going, you know, if you make a decision and, this is what you're going to do. This is the kind of person you're going to be. And you start making your way towards that. Things are going to happen. It might not, you know, yeah. it might not pan out the exact way that you think it's going to, but it's going to, you know what I mean? So it's going to go that direction some way, somehow. Right. Um. You know, overweight, non-athletic kid with no, connections in hollywood whatsoever i'm now a performing strong man who can bend steel and i have a career as a professional stuntman you know it's uh inspiring man it's awesome thank you i mean that's that's really all i can say seriously if i can do all that stuff yeah that that's my point really any anybody can yeah what did it what made you decide because you said like i'm it came to a point you're like, I'm one and I need to make a change. And I, I want to become this person. Like, was, did that come out of pain? Like, were you just, you know, you weren't happy and you know, you didn't like where you were at and it, it became so more painful to stay where you're at than it is um, the pain of change. Cause I, I think that's a, a thing for people. It's like sometimes staying the same, you know, it's comfortable, right. Mm-hmm. Or you're not making change is comfortable. The change seems scary and uncomfortable but when the pain of where you're at becomes more uncomfortable than the the pain or or the discomfort of changing, that's when I feel like people make that change. Is, was that the case for you? 
Yeah, it was. I wasn't even thinking about that. That's a good question. That's exactly what happened. Uh, I had graduated high school. Um, I had never been steered at all towards any kind of career path whatsoever, like, you know, by teachers or, you know, anybody like that. So yes. when I, when I graduated, um, I just, I had no path whatsoever. So I just kind of drifted and, and did nothing basically. Okay. Um, my life came to a complete standstill and nothing was happening. Uh, I was like 18, 19 years old at this point. The only thing I had going for me at that time was my girlfriend. Yes. And, you know, long story short, she broke up with me on my birthday. Oh. On my birthday. The only thing I had going broke, you know, and she broke up with me, broke my heart. So then I had absolutely nothing. So, yeah, then that was the point when you know, something needs to happen and right. uh that's that's when i started getting my life together yeah, yeah i really did a, a complete complete turn changed my whole entire lifestyle yeah that's that's how it went down yeah i think a lot of people sometimes you have to get to that point to to make that switch kind of make that change it's yeah because like i said you know i'm not sure if you agree with this but a lot of times people you know if it's if it's not painful enough you know, to make that change and they just, they just stay stuck. And if, yeah, like, you know, if, if you're listening to this guys and you feel like you're just kind of comfortably numb, just sticking, you know, doing what's comfortable, you know, try to realize that before it does get to the point where it gets so painful that you feel like you have to make the change, right. Try to, try to be consciously aware of that. Um, yeah. cause, I, cause I think you can get ahead of the game before it gets to that point. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. Absolutely. And all it takes is small little changes. You don't have to do like what I did. I just did a complete 180 and like <laughs> seriously for real changed my whole lifestyle. Start making little changes. It it adds up and it adds up quick. And all of a sudden you are this different kind of person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah that, that's kind of what the Elevate Everyday Podcast is all about. It's like getting that 1% better every day. And if you mm -hmm. do that, like you're a hundred percent better in a hundred days, right? Like you can, those incremental changes are going to compound over time. It's going to be, you're going to be a completely different person. Like you said, totally. So, yeah, for sure. I agree. Awesome. Um, so I know we were talking before the podcast about you're starting to write a screenplay, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what's kind of in the works for you? What do you, what are you working on? Um, and you know, what, what can, what can we be excited about what you're working on and everything? Oh boy. It's a, a long journey before anything actually, okay. you know, really for real happens, but yeah, I finally, uh, like I said, the strike's been going on and, uh, all that I've had to it actually started over the pandemic because I, there was a long, long shutdown during then. So I started writing this script uh, it's called The Strong Man. Surprise, surprise. But yeah, it's kind of a very heightened fictional version of uh, not just my life, but a lot of a lot of lives of guys that I know in that community and okay. uh, in the strong man community. And um, it weaves in some actual historic uh, characters, real life people from uh, from history, uh, most notably the mighty Adam. So uh my strongman lineage, if you will, goes directly back to this guy named the Mighty Adam, oh. who, if anybody's uh, listening, there is an amazing documentary about him uh, called The Mighty Adam. He's a guy named Joseph Greenstein. Perfect example of, you know, not a big guy, but can do. He was this little tiny Jewish guy, <laughs> one of the most famous strongmen in the history of strongman. This guy was absolutely insane. Uh, with what he could do um so my lineage goes with me my mentor is a guy named chris Ryder. one of his mentors is a guy named slim the Hammerman farman who was the protege of the mighty adam so i kind of took that lineage and wove it into the uh into the story of the screenplay so it's about a, a sideshow strongman who uh, can't give away too much and I, I can't uh, wrap it all up quickly. So the, it follows a, it's a gritty crime thriller about a sideshow strong man who uh, uh, 
crosses paths with this really sleazy criminal and he has to skip town and he goes back to his old stomping grounds and it's a sideshow so it's the whole you know traditional characters of the sideshow and that's that's the that's where it all takes place but yeah i wrote it it's my first real script that i've ever done uh, worked with professional writers on it so it's the real deal wow finally just finished it took me years but uh finally just finished it and as of right now we are moving forward with it and uh seeing seeing what we can do that's to make it happen that's yeah. awesome man are, are you gonna be an actor in it as well or no i had originally written it as a vehicle for myself but uh that was years ago now so my priorities have changed and uh just not really interested in doing that probably probably do some stunts in it or something like that but yeah that's about it trying to trying to get a name talent as the as the lead that's awesome that's that's where we're at at the moment that's awesome well i'll I'll definitely be following you and be excited when that comes out that's pretty cool very cool thank you Awesome. Um, so one thing we do on the Elevate Everyday podcast at the very end, uh, we always ask the the guests, you know, what is one thing that you'd like to challenge the listeners after listening to this? Because it's the Elevate All Everyday podcast is not about just sitting back listening. We we want to take action on what we learn like right away. Um, because that's how you're really gonna make a change in your life. So what is one thing that you'd like to challenge the listeners after listening to this to take action on right away? whatever think of that one thing that you seriously would really for real like to do and just take a step doesn't matter how big or how small you don't have to accomplish the goal right here right now just take a tiny little step that by the end of the day gets you just that tiniest little step closer to that goal you'd be surprised what kind of effect that has and how that literally just gets the ball rolling and uh, a lot of uh, stuff will happen and you'll surprise yourself believe me for sure that's awesome man yeah that's that's really good advice because I think a lot of people even you know just relating it to fitness because I'm a fitness guy but um, like they're like I want to get to the a six pack and they've got just this vision and they think like the small steps are just like insignificant but those are literally the steps <laughs> that get you there like you're saying like take these very small steps you know do some meal prepping um start walking a little bit more like these little things th- those small steps are going to start propelling you and then you can scale that up and that that is you know you can't get there without those small steps first so i think absolutely that's, that's really good advice awesome yeah. Very cool. Where can people find you, Todd? I know you're all over TV, but where where can people, you know, if they want to learn more or follow you, where where can people find you? Uh, Two big ones. You can go, I have a website, thestrongmantoddjones.com. That gives you a good good idea of what I've done and where I'm at. And uh, that's also, I use my uh, feats in a public speaking capacity. So if anybody's looking for a speaker or you know, just want to have a some uh, kind of unique entertainment at your party or whatever, and you want to see some guy doing feats of strength, I'm available on there. You can reach out. And if you just want to see uh, my film and television stuff, you can go, uh, search me on imdb.com. Just uh, type in Todd Ryan Jones. You'll get a pretty good list of all the stuff that I've done. Very cool. Awesome, Todd. Well, I really appreciate you being on the podcast, brother. Um, I know a lot of people I'm sure got inspired from your story and, and I appreciate you. Uh, but listeners, like I said, you know, don't just sit back and listen, put this stuff into action into your life right away. Okay. That's what we're all about on the elevate everyday podcasts. All right. Um, and guys smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, stay tuned every week for expert guests, badass guests like Todd Ryan Jones on here. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video, but in the meantime, Elevate every damn day. Peace, y'all. Thank you, Cade. Been a pleasure. Absolutely, brother. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.